Hey guys, just wanted to do my review of Supergirl Season 1, Episode 17, Manhunter. So, Martian Manhunter is still being kept in custody at the DEO. She, um, John Jones is tr he's trying to tell Alex to distance herself from the whole investigation from him just so she can has he has she has plausible deniability but she wants to look after him the way he looked after her and of course it Lucy Lucy Lane and Colonel Harper have come to the DEO as part of the investigation to inter interrogate John Jones and to figure out what his intentions were on planet Earth so in the so in the flashback, the real Hank Henshaw is leading a unit of DEO agents, which includes Jeremiah Danvers, Kara and Alex's dad, as well as Har Harper himself, to the Amazon, to the South African, it's like a South African Amazon, to go find Martian Manhunter, who they got intel of his arrival on Earth from Superman, apparently, and... Given that they also know that John Jones is 300 years old, Jeremiah tries to advocate for advocate for him, saying like, "Oh, think about what he's seen, what we can learn from him." But of course, Hen Henshaw is a complete z xenophobe, so he just wants to kill the thing. And before he's about to get attacked by a python, um, Jeremiah is saved by. John Jones, who introduces himself, and he learns a little bit about Martian Manhunter and how he's the last of his kind, and Jeremiah tells him about his own daughters, and they find, like, a kinship, because uh, they both had daughters, both of them were fathers of daughters, and Jeremiah offers to advocate for his team, to advocate for John's, that he's not a threat, but he's immediately attacked by... Hank Henshaw, who has this gun designed to take down Martian Manhunter, and in order to save his life, um, Jeremiah gets into this fight with Hank Henshaw and throws him off a ledge, but not before he's stabbed in the gut by the real Hank Henshaw, and his last dying words are, take care of his daughters, and so that's how he takes on the appearance of Hank Henshaw, and he... And Colonel Harper just doesn't won't have any of it just because he he was close friends with the real Hank Henshaw and he just wants to he just wants justice for his death regardless of his motivations and reasons because he's just as much of a xen xenophobe as Hank Henshaw was and then of course Alex is interrogated and it talks about how in a flashback she was went out clubbing and got drunk and was taken into, was arrested because she was about to get behind the wheel and then Hank Henshaw or Hank Henshaw John Jones come is comes to recruit her saying that she can make something of her life and she doesn't have to be in or feel like she's in her sister's shadow but and she's able to beat the lie detector test saying that did that she never knew about the true identity of Martian Manhunter, but Lucy still knows she's lying about it, so she's taken into custody anyway. And that's when and when they mention that she's being taken to Katniss Labs, um Kara goes to ask James James Olsen about it and he's he says that's the reason why Superman never worked with the government. It's because of Katmus Labs is there is where they dissect and weaponize aliens for for use of trying to protect the planet and they don't know what happens to humans there, so as the last ditch effort they decide that and because she was kind of conflicted anyway about the whole about what what was going on that loot that Lucy is told that Kara reveals to Lucy that she's Supergirl and how she's Lucy responds saying it all makes sense now she just didn't want to put two and two together and 
how and Kara tries to re- reach out to her, empath- be empathet- emphatic, and say that the reason why she had to lie is because she had to f- protect be something that she, she was not in order to fit in and she knows that Lucy's in a similar position by pretending to be something she's not in order to fit in and keep you know keep her ranking within the military and that leads to another flashback in which Kara we had her first day of school with Alex and how she was overwhelmed by the super hearing and you know she was looking around the beach kind of fascinated with birds and how it was and Alex chastised her for attracting unwanted attention from the other high schoolers. And but then of course she heard with her super hearing a woman who got into a car crash and and of course Supergirl rushed to the scene in a manner that was kind of similar to uh, the pilot of Superman the animated series where in which Clark first used his powers to save somebody from a car accident. And so Super Kara saves a woman in and her baby from the car they get she gets them out but of course the car still explodes and the door hits Alex and she walks away with a few stitches and Jeremiah comes to talk to Kara about trying to keep a low profile with her powers and how she how she really sees these lead lined glasses to help her with her vision and control basically control her vision and then of course there's another flash forward to when she Bruce gets hired at the, or goes for a job interview at CatCo, and in order to win Cat's favor, she tries to say, like, oh, I'm not special, I'm not, I haven't earned the right to be say that I'm special, mm-hmm. and she uses her x-ray vision to tell her that, to mention that, oh, I can go pick up your prescription, oh, by the way, your pen's out of ink, and when she sees a forest fire on the news, and she's told that, and Cat asks her, are you willing to put aside any personal anything in your personal life and whatever to for this job she reluctantly says yes and just a way to try to appeal to Lucy yeah I've had to pretend to be something I'm not just in order to fit in and just to you know function and that's when and so Supergirl and Lucy then attack the convoy that's carrying um, Alex and John Jones, and the attack is able to cause him to like damage or drop a dampener that kept John Jones from using his powers, and he uses like his mind control powers on Harper to learn that Jeremiah was still that he found Jeremiah still alive when he was down in the Amazon, is being presumably held captive or at at Katmus Labs, or he's being held somewhere, and so because they're fugitives, um, John Jones and Alex have to go on the run, but she, but using his mind control, John Jones is able to conv- manipulate Harper into making Lucy the new head of the DEO, and she's nervous about it, and, you know, Supergirl agrees to help her out, in the, and... And in return for all she's done. And another side plot is that um, Sab- Saban is like is trying to get is being tried being is being comforted by Wynn after she's been laid off and uses drinking mimosa. She's apparently been blacklisted as a reporter. So in order to get back at Kara, she takes the prep talk of saying that from when that she can do whatever she wants that she sets her mind to so she walks back into the CACO office goes to Kara's computer and types an angry letter making it look like it was from Kara and apparently it seems to be like a running gag with DC shows like in the same way that Star Labs on the Flash has no security apparently nobody none of the employees at CACO have computers that they have the common sense to password protect and but you have a feeling that you know that Cat Grant is far from stupid and is too smart to fall for something like that. And we're proven right and when she confronts um Saban about it and says and it makes it seem like, Oh, is oh Kara I never knew all this about Kara and then she had the typing patterns cross checked by when 
and realized and basically ratted and basically ratted her out to Cat Grant and says, "You ever try this again? I'm gonna call the police." And so Wynn finds her drunk on a rooftop after she sees fly, Supergirl flying to stop a crime, and goes on this rant about how she was supposed to be on his. He was supposed Wynn was supposed to be on her side, and Wynn says she still is, but she basically crossed a crossed a line, and she couldn't, and Wynn couldn't condone what she was doing. So Sirvan, another drunken tirade, keeps going on about how. Wynn doesn't know her and how she couldn't have had anything she wanted. Now she has no friends, no job, she has nothing. And then one of her heels snaps and she falls off a ledge and break, And she lets out this sonic scream in order to break her fall. And I had to rewatch that scene again to figure out to see if it was maybe she didn't know she had this power. But it looked like, on a second glance, it looked like she didn't have this power because she was have this look of shame on her face knowing that Wynn knows that she has the superpower. So apparently this is something she had laying dorm something laying dormant and I guess we're going to learn more about her origins in the next week's episode which is so excited for because it's the next week is definitely going to be the Flash Supergirl crossover which I hope it's going to be one of the best episodes since well It'll be up there with um, last week's episode, Fallen, and maybe, and maybe, the Flash will you know help Supergirl you know regain her reputation, and and of course it's going to be I think it's, it's going to be really cool. It's basically you know Supergirl and Flash versus Livewire and Silver Banshee. Um, but overall, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Not quite as good as last week, but it still give you some insight onto some of the care some of the characters. Um, what do you guys think of it? Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. I will talk to you guys soon. You can also feel free to go check out my Daredevil Season 2 premiere review. And I'm also going to have um, some TV news coming up later tonight. So stay tuned, guys, and take care.